how do you really use elements in classical feng shui? In this video, I'm going to clarify for you all the five elements that are used in classical feng shui, what they mean in terms of the actual objects that you need, as well as the colors that relate to all these elements. Now, this is a video in a whole series of videos, so make sure you watch all of them. Go to my link in bio. I combine all the video in the series uh, so that you can just binge and watch everything all in one. If I'm new to you, my name is Sabrina Kadri, and I'm the founder of Feng Shui and Prosper. And in the past 15 years, I've been a consultant, teacher, and trainer, and I've worked with hundreds and thousands of students and clients all over the world to help them implement real Feng Shui the way it was meant to be practiced from like hundreds and thousands of years ago so that they can finally see real results. In case you're not aware, in Chinese metaphysics, there are five elements that we use. That's uh, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. And just in case, if you haven't watched the previous video where I went through the real feng shui bagua, we also talked about numbers and their elements, right? So flying star number one is the element of water. Water, fish pond, or pool, or waterfall, this could be man-made, or natural, be very, very careful where you want to put water in feng shui. Because if you put a pool, and I know a lot of people love pools, but if you put a pool in the wrong spot, you, instead of making money, you're actually gonna go bankrupt. And trust me, I've taught people, I've certified people into feng shui, and I have seen over and over again how the wrong water placement can get people into huge financial trouble. So be very, very careful there. Okay, and then numbers two, five, and eight, they're all earth numbers, okay? And what are the objects that you can place or what are the objects naturally or uh, either placed naturally or placed by you that will activate the earth element or these numbers are ceramics, pottery, crystals, rocks, and boulders. Numbers three and four are wood element numbers. So if you want to activate three and four, then you place plants. It can be real plants or fake plants. For bedrooms, you cannot put real plants. I'll just give you a quick uh, heads up on that one. The numbers six and seven are both metal numbers. So if you want to activate the number six and sevens, then you go for more metal. Uh, we're talking about metal statues, metal furniture, metal wall hangings, metal light fixtures. I mean, the light obviously is not metal, but like the, the structure of the light itself can be metal instead of wood, for instance. Um, and basically anything made out of metal can be the element that you place there in that direction to activate more metal. And then you have the number nine, which is the fire element. And stoves, candles, fireplace, heater, anything that either makes fire or has heat, like we're talking about very like um, heat that you can really feel, that will be the fire element. So if you want to activate more of the number nine in your flying star chart, then you put these items there. It is my personal preference when it comes to feng shui placements to actually use the elements first and foremost. If you're not able to put fire, for instance, Let's say you have a number nine in your room and you don't want to put fire in there, let's say a candle and you're a little bit paranoid about burning candle in the bedroom, then the next step, if you're not able to put the actual objects, then you put the colors. So the colors for the water element are black and shades of blue. Uh, the colors for earth are all shades of brown. The colors for wood are all shades of green. Um, colors of metal are white all shades of gray, gold, brass, silver, platinum, chrome, uh, bronze, all that. Any metal color you can use uh, for your, if you want to activate six and seven, if you want to activate the number nine, you can use the colors reds, yellows, and oranges. In feng shui, however, you wanna be really careful with the red color because too much red can actually be actually be too much. <laughs> the uh, the safer fire element colors to go for are yellows and oranges. So if you look back at your layout and you're looking at the permanent energy here, at the very least now you know the numbers three and four are wood elements. The number, the number eight is an earth element. The number one is a water element. The number six is a metal element. Again, this is just a sneak peek. Uh, I go through all this and so much more in my certification level. However, 
when it comes to being properly trained in qi manipulation, especially where flying star uh, feng shui is concerned, it is being very um, familiar with the numbers and their elements and to understand what these numbers potentially do either as the mountain star, if they are on the top left, mean again, it affects your health and relationship. And what do these numbers do to you if they are as a water star in, in your bedroom, for instance, uh, which will denote the experience or the energy that it has relating to your salary, your business, or investments. These are the things that a traditional, a classically trained feng shui practitioner looks at, which is part of the reason why real feng shui is not in the mainstream media, but because it is so hard to talk about this in social media. I get comments about people saying, oh, Zafrina, then why don't you just tell us what to do? I want you to be safe. So if I just give too much generalized idea and you just take one little idea and you run with it, and yet your layout is different from your layout uh, from compared to your neighbor. Your layout, even though you have the same chart, is different from someone down the street, from someone halfway across the world. It is so hard for me, because I wanna make sure that you feng shui as safe as possible, especially if you're not able to do a private consultation with a classically trained feng shui consultant. At the very least, I want to take you away from fast food feng shui. That is one of the intentions that I have for these video series. I just want to save people their energy, their time, their frustration from following the fast food bakwa, which I talked about all the way in video one of these video series. Because that fast food bakwa is absolutely not feng shui at all. This is the feng shui as it's meant to be done from hundreds and thousands of years ago. You do not follow the feng shui that was created only in the 1960s just to serve the mainstream uh, market with like easily digestible information. But if it's too simple, if it's one size fits all, which is what it is, that fast food feng shui bakwa, it's not doing you any favors. And I have people who call me up and say, hey, Safrina, I've had, I've paid five feng shui consultants and they've all given me really bad results. You're gonna be my very last one. Because otherwise I am going to completely give up on feng shui. And that is where it hurts my heart because guess what? All those five feng shui consultants charge good money for fast food feng shui stuff. And if you're not getting results because you're using fast food feng shui, then that saddens the rest of us from the traditional classical uh, feng shui uh, practices because we've just lost a potential life that we could change simply because we've all been fed the diluted bastardized feng shui in mainstream media. So if you want to go back to the rest of my video series, because I have 15 of them, you want to make sure you watch all of them, you can go back and look for them. Are you going to be a professionally trained feng shui consultant at the end of 15 short video series? Absolutely not. But at the very least, you will start to be able to differentiate what is real feng shui and what is not. That is the utmost priority for me in this video series. And hopefully I have managed that. But if you want to just be able to sit and absorb everything all in one go, click on my link in bio, uh, 